and welcome to Great oh, Hang, the greatest oh, hang that was... ever hanged. I'm your hang, Micah Fox, coming to at you with your other hang, Tim McLaughlin. How's it going, Timmy? It's going well, Micah. How are you? He's so mad. I'm feeling great because I watched him just stare at his phone for a minute. I was typing in my Speak Ill of the Dead guy. Upon, oh, yeah. Well, maybe you should be saying it into the podcast instead of typing it onto your phone. You ever think about that? I'm the one who edits it. I got time. I can sit here and type it in and then start the show. What about my time just looking at you, staring at it your phone? It was four seconds. Well, how's it going? Bad. I don't like to not start the show. Oh, no. <laughs> what happens? It gives me anxiety. I don't like doing it. I like to be the one in charge of starting it. It gives you anxiety? Yes. I'm you fucking have, anxiety now. You have this stress when you're not talking. You're like a cokehead. You're like, sure. if I'm not talking, I don't exist. That's true. And if the if I don't start the show, does it even start? Yeah, just start it's it. It's like a fucking tree falling in the woods when no one's around. Is the show even started? It's it started. This uh, is it. All right, what's up, bitch? Oh, you know me. I fucking tweaked my neck so I can't move very quickly. Well, do you want to switch sides? Is it easier for you to look to the other side? Yeah, I mean, I might as well considering I started the pod. Well, no, you don't get to sit so on the left side. So now I get side, to sit on you? the... Yeah, we should switch sides, and I I run the show now. All right, fine. Do you need the notes? No. Because you make fun of me for not having the for having the notes all the time. Let's see if I can do this without your all fucking right. ass. All right, all right, all right. You want to go over your, or under? I'll go over. Don't forget your water, stupid. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Give me my pillow, though. Is that, I no, no, I get everything. Support. Damn it. And I have to say, this side of the couch is very uncomfortable because you've already crushed it. I sit over there. It is. If so. That's where my ass That's where my ass has made a giant divot into the couch. Tim, our bed has a sag where you sleep. This couch is crushed where you sit. So? No what? furniture is safe. <laughs> no, but all of them still stand. It's all still standing. What? Oh, you didn't break the legs? Yeah, the legs aren't broken off the shit. It still works. That's how you can tell. Yeah. Tim's like, I'll will start adopting change when my when the furniture breaks under me. Change. I, I yeah, that's what me and Obama said. Yeah, you hope you don't break this chair. <laughs> that's right, bitch. Oh, Micah. Keep going with the show. I was going to start the conversation, but I'm not doing that now. Oh, <laughs> I'm you not cannot, pushing the conversation. You're actually forward. also not going to be part of this podcast. No, no, no. I'll, I, I listen. What I do for the show is I push conversations forward and I make transitions into the uh, segments. Mm -hmm. But let's see if you can do that. If you can be the leader of the show, right. I lead this show. I lead this show to the fucking promised land of hilarity and where fucking laughter ensues. Remember when you were like, "I'm not going to push the conversation forward," and then you didn't shut up for forty seconds straight. Yeah, but I didn't. And push then start it. talking about the promised land. <laughs> I didn't. Like, well, you should know about that. The Jews love the promised land. Forty days and forty nights. We never fucking get there, and when we get there, we don't get to stay. Are we going to talk about it? What? Oh, the Palestine-Israeli conflict? Fuck no. No, no. What? Are we going to talk about what? It could be a million things. What? Um, The fact that you're balding? Do you, what, do you want me to start <laughs> guessing at shit? No, we're not going to talk about that. The fact that you're probably going to lose your one and only part-time job pretty soon? I am probably going to lose my job soon, i you, Would you like me to tee you up to talk about your trip to Maryland? Well, that would be exciting, but I was going to talk about how we were sitting on a... The, where the couch is back. Oh, yeah, the couch is back. I saw one comment saying that they missed the couch, and uh, I was looking at the clips, and I'm like, yeah, the couch does look better. More homey, I think. All right. So what do the you think? I think, I, I think it was a giant pain in the ass to move the couch around and then have Nori Davids cancel on us. What does that have to do with Nori? Why are you blaming that on because Nori? Because I did it really fast because I had gotten zero sleep because we drove back from Maryland, oh, yes. and it was really annoying that I did it all, and then right when I got done, it canceled. Yeah, that does suck. I mean, and it... Because like, then I wouldn't have had to do it to yesterday when I was fucking exhausted. So you're not mad that you did it. You're mad that you did it in a rush while you were tired. Yes. All right. You hear that, Nori? Couches were moved. Yeah. And you hear that, audience? We tried to get a good. We tried to get a guest today, but we couldn't. Listen, Tim. We so got happens. him. He just canceled. That's yeah. All. But also, no. But I mean, we tried to get people last minute. But people are busy. They can't be doing last minute shit anymore. Not me. All anyway. our friends have gotten to the point in their careers where they're busy on a Monday night. Yeah, not us though. Here we are. 
Yeah, here we are talking, sitting on the couch again, huh? So how was your trip to Maryland with Shane, Tim? Micah, thank you very much for asking. Shane Torres, friend of the show, and I wow. went to you might Bald- Look how, did you see how fast he stopped touching my hand? He was like, and then pulled away like I'm a snake. They don't want to see that. They don't want to see gay boy stuff on the show. Yeah, they do. They love how we love each other and they call us mom and dad and stuff. Even though, <laughs> even though the only thing we'd be mom and dad who are Down Syndrome children. So that must, that we know what that makes you guys. Damn. Albanian Nation, rise up. Uh, Shane Torres, friend of the show, and I went to Baltimore, Maryland, where I allowed Shane to headline for me. Classic joke. Yes, and it was very fun. We went to the Port Comedy Club. If you're out in Maryland or in the uh, Baltimore area anywhere, if you got a chance to go to the Port Comedy Club, it's a good comedy club. It was good. Yeah. There's no two drink minimums. They just have a bar in there. It's really small. The room is like really small, and they jam pack people in there, and it's like it makes for like a really good shows. Hell yeah, dude! I love that kind of shit. Yeah. This guy, he told us that he goes there almost every week, and he said that Shane and I uh, tied with Dan Soder for best show that he's seen since they've opened there. That's incredible. I want to see the list of the other people who perform there so we can know who to shit on. Oh, uh, it's a bunch of bullshit-ass people. Fight Ants, Brandon Sagalo, yeah. Brendan Sagalo. Who else? JRE's was? Ian Fidance? Yeah, uh, Jordan Jensen. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else sucks that perform there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> a, Damn, Tim. We're going to get guests any moment now. That's right. With this kind of talk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Most of these people have been on our show. Yes. We haven't had Saggy on. You're right, or Jordan. Or Jordan. We should ask both of them yeah. and then see who answers and then say they can do it. Yeah, and then they'll cancel on us last minute. Probably, yeah. But, uh, no, it's a good club. It was really good. Oh, speaking of shitty fucking comedians, your good friend Karen Feehan headlined over there. Friend of the show, oh, Karen she did? Feehan. Yeah. Who, if you want to check out Karen Feehan, you can check her out at the patreon.com slash great hang where she was just recently on our very newest episode of the advice show where she was very funny she was very funny on it she has a clip up right now tim yeah where she's um she's she's doing a show and her mom's in the audience Uh and then they start like she's doing like talking to the audience they're asking her about OnlyFans, and i'm like her mom is in the fucking audience right and these uh, people are animals they're animals they're like they're like what's the most money you've made like what she's like well when i first started She's like, I think I made $70,000 my first week. I'm like, dear God. What the hell? All right. Still took our $40 to do the show, though. Yeah, well, you got to give it to her. She says she thinks paper money is fun. It's fun. But it was also funny. They're like, what kind of stuff do you show on your OnlyFans? She's like, what do you show? She's like, "Uh, yeah, I trained four pit bulls. What do you fucking think? (laughs) She's very funny. She's like that little guy that trains pit bulls. What is that little person, big dogs or whatever that show is? There's no such thing. Yeah. Yeah, there's like there was a show on TLC of like a little person that trained pit bulls. That's what I feel like this show is kind of. Kind of, yeah. I'm training you oh, to be nice to me. What? Yeah. How's that going, failure? <laughs> it's going pretty bad, <laughs> based on that last sentence. And uh, uh, so I asked the club, I go, "How was Karen? Was she very nice?" They were like, "Karen was cool as hell." They're like, she rules. They're like, she, all she wants is sparkling water and weed. Yeah. And she just fucking gets high as shit and drinks her water and then leaves. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the good thing about booking sober people. They don't drain your bar. Yeah. And the other thing was, like, uh, they were telling me they hadn't, so far, they haven't had any real assholes come to the club. Comics, you mean, or Yeah, audience? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. audience, we had assholes in our second show Saturday, or Friday. They were drunk as fuck, these people. My God. If you were at his Friday show, take this as a warning. You're a piece of shit. If you were at my Friday second show, you got to see me have a minor meltdown. Unlike what this show is all the time. (laughs) It was worse than this. This is a character. Where you fucking admit to crying about where your Uh, career is going. Why we got to bring it up. I should have never said anything about it. Oh, my God. You want to know it's the only clip I've ever gotten, we've ever put up where People were like, this is actually really sad and pathetic. They and didn't I, say it They're was like, pathetic. I wish you never said anything no, at they all. they did not. When did <laughs> they, they were, say that? They were like, they I have to you? stop watching the show because it was funny and cute that he's a failure, but the fact that it makes him cry bums me out. Damn. Did Nobody they message that, that to Nobody you? said that. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, did they send that personally? Because I did not see that in any of the comments. 
One of the comments said, Tim, you can do it. Just keep working hard. And that made me even more sad. Yeah, that sucks. You're like, <laughs> keep working hard. Ah, man. Yeah, now Sheen in our group chat, if I attack him, he'll say, just go cry into your notebook some more. <laughs> <laughs> Which is rude. I should never. This is why you don't let anyone see into your emotions ever. They use it against <laughs> you and they use it to hurt you. Tim? What? I. I agree. I made a clip out of it immediately. I know. So uh, I also see you as less of a man. Well, it happens. What are you going to do? But if you want, I'll be putting out a clip of my mini meltdown probably soon. Tim, I think all of your clips are mini meltdowns. All of your clips are like, I'm not being funny right now, and damn, I'm off. It's like, God damn, Tim, show you being funny once so people know you're a real comic. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> like, you just go through them, and do you look for the moments when you fail? Uh-huh. That, that is some, that's some fucking loser-ass shit. I love Where you're like, I can't fail I if, I, if I, I say I'm a failure. Well, no, I cut one out today about the time I got choked by my teacher. That's funny. Yeah, so that was good. There you go. And then afterwards, I go on and on about how I'm on and how the audience is so lucky to be there because I'm on and I'm killing it. I was like three minutes into my set. Tim is just a meta comic. I really not actually comedy. I'm going to be honest with you. I kill so fucking hard this weekend. I'm surprised that they didn't give me more money. Oh, a kill bonus. Yeah, they should have been like, wow, did we get two headliners? Dear Lord. No wonder you fucking cry because you, you've you inflated your sense of worth and then when, like, to something that doesn't exist and then when your reality doesn't match up to it, you cry you like a little bitch. something that doesn't exist? I did fucking kill all oh, weekend. Oh, were there two headliners? Yeah, that was funny, though. That's just a rude thing to say to Shane. <laughs> Shane, if you're listening, keep taking him on the road. We need the cash. Yes, Shane, if you're listening, please, 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 I need this. Also, any other headliners that get booked, if you're listening, just put in a good word for me at the club. That Ask them to book me as a headliner. Or tell them you could bring a feature that's actually really a headliner. Um, and how was I this weekend? Why do you ask? I was about to, Micah. You were not. You've never asked me how I've done in my life. Micah, <laughs> if you had let me start the show, I would have asked you how you were immediately. Everyone knows you got a fucking crink neck because you won't stop fucking running your fucking mouth about it. Maybe if you slowed your jaw down a little, it wouldn't put so much fucking stress on your neck. I mentioned it once. I don't. What do you mean won't stop running my jaw? All day you've been like, my neck, my neck, my neck. If you could say my neck, maybe it He's would fucking He's editing. I up. say my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. And Tim's like, all he hears is neck. Hacky. Oh, is it? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, Tim. No, tell us more about how funny you are. Well, see, what I would have done in that situation is stayed away from it entirely. That joke's been made a million times, and there was no really reason to make it now. Because you have been complaining all day, and I'm saying that you working your jaw muscles is working your neck too much, and you should just shut up and chill. What? That's right. That was, I don't know. Go ahead, Micah. So I went to Eric Monocle's wedding this weekend. Happy wedding to Eric Monocle, friend of the show. A wedding that I was supposed to attend with Tim. Yes. And actually Tim RSVP'd us both for without telling me so yes. that I put avails on the schedule for other comedy clubs. Got booked at other clubs and had to tell them I couldn't go, which I don't like to do. Well, I didn't like that you had to do it either. Then he takes this spot with Shane and ditches me. I had to do it. I needed the money. I made almost $1,000 this weekend. And listen, Tim, you missed out because, boy, oh, boy, was there something you would have loved to see. Yes, I heard that the wedding was fun. What was, okay, was what I would have gotten to see Tommy McNamara related? Oh, about how he has next and about how he hit on me all night. He hit on you all night? And almost got to fuck me if he didn't Irish exit. Dear Lord, Tommy, you fucked up once again, my good bitch. (laughs) He would have not. Dear reader, he would have not gotten to fuck me. Wow, just third base. You know, that's the only base I really like. Michael would have been like, eat it, bitch. Eat it like it's beer. Oh, God, like it's beer. (laughs) Because he's a drunk. Oh, I was like, <laughs> damn, your your pussy would have smelled like Malort the next day. That would have been horrible. Oh, Malort? Yeah. Uh, why why did you ask if it was Tommy related? Because you got sent a picture of us smooching. 
Yeah, well, you and Tommy took that nice picture together of you smooching each other's anuses, of course. And then, but also Tommy gets fucking hammered and you never know. He he, he pops his shirt off at weddings. So actually, okay, so we had a me we had a bet with Bobby that he would take his shirt off at the end of the wedding, as uh-huh. he is wont to do. Tommy and loves to pop his top. He loves to pop his top. Uh, Bobby was saying he wouldn't, which was an insane thing to do. And uh, so Django and I were both like, I got money on this. So we, we got a side bet. Of course, no one could have predicted Tommy would leave before it was time to take his shirt off. Wow. Tommy cut early. So did Bobby, actually. But that's a whole other issue. Well, Bobby left. We were trying to get Bobby on today to grill him about why he left to go to John Lennon's grave alone and take acid. He left the wedding at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> because he was too drunk, went fully home. Then got restless and decided to pop acid and go to the Upper West Side to see John Lennon's shooting site. Oh, yeah. Oh, he Dakota, went to where he was shot. Where he was shot. I'm like, it's like, what? You mm-hmm. irish your friends for that? He likes, to, he likes to go on adventure. He probably doesn't like that we told this on the pod. Too bad. You shouldn't be doing that shit to your friends. What tell? Oh, what? But Bobby did not what I did. Yeah, you yeah, shouldn't no. be Irishing and then telling them what you did afterwards. Well, we were it's all fair like, game we were all point. like, where the fuck are you, you fucko? It's way yeah. too early to bail and fucking Irish is not cool. Say goodbye to your fucking friends. Why are you Irishing your yeah. friends at a wedding? Well, That's I- a, you know what? This is a tip. This is a tip for not for being a bad hang. Like if you want to not be a bad hang. At, like, a big event, say goodbye to your friends. Say, say goodbye to your... Like, why are you just disappearing? Like, we all got, like... We all met up beforehand. We all get dressed up. It's not like it's just some bar bar where we were, like, running into yeah, each other. Yeah, if like, it's, like, a regular party, you can Irish. You can Irish, but it's, like, at a, a wedding of one of your good friends? That's fucking... It's fucking whack. Bobby half Irishes, though. He likes Scottishes because he says goodbye to, like, some people. Well, actually, you want to know what he did? He did He did worse than an Irish exit. He did a uh, Colombian exit. Oh, he took some coke and He dipped. said he was going to go on a drug run, come back with the goods, and then didn't. Uh, that is the rudest shit I've ever heard of. Any drug addict is like salivating, waiting for the drugs to come back. Yeah, yeah. And then he just leaves them high, not high and dry. Wow. You almost said high and dry, and then you changed it at the last second. Tim, that's what's called being a pro. That's but that wasn't even good. what I was going to bring up. All right, so what happened, bitch? So we're we're at the dinner, right? The yes. dinner part, and the, the father of the bride gets up to give a speech, uh-huh. right? And he starts talking about the bride's siblings. Shit that, like, we're like, why are you talking about them? It was, like, unclear. Then he launches into a whole long story about how he went on to visit, the like, southern Chicago or southern Illinois. And he's talking for a good five minutes just talking about how, like, well, it used to be called this town. And now it's called this town. And we went to this place. And everyone at our table is just looking around like, oh, my God. Effingham. He hates Eric. Oh, he might hate Eric. He, because it's like, who gives? A, he didn't mention the his daughter, and he didn't mention Eric at all during their <laughs> wedding speech. And then he gets to the end of talking about the South Chicago, and she's like, "And anyway, uh, Joanne married Eric." Didn't even say and good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we brought this wonderful man into our family. It was bizarre you would have loved it oh yeah it was so clear he didn't give a fuck about his daughter dude what we what should have happened and i've been i i I actually haven't been thinking about it i thought about it just now is uh when he goes and then she married eric everyone should should have started chanting eric 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 it was crazy it was fucking nuts yeah can you imagine I saw a similar type of speech at Joe McMahon's wedding about his the mother his mother in law was like gave kind of a shitty speech about her daughter. What the hell, dude? Yeah, I was like, because I was all drunk trying to be in a positive mood. I was like, uh, oh well, this was all nice except for Dale's speech, and Joe goes. Her mother's speech was way worse than even Dale's. What did she say? Oh, if I could remember, I wish I would. You're grinning in a way that means you can remember and you don't uh, want to say. I don't remember fully enough to retell it. 
But it was kind of about how they don't really see eye to eye and how (laughs) his wife had always been kind of a rebel and a loner and all of these things. This is what happens. You get drunk and you start saying some nasty shit. Yeah. You can't be doing that at somebody's wedding. You do not want to be a fucking nasty little fuck at somebody's wedding. Fuck no, dude. Mm-mm. No, honey. Anyway, you would have loved it because it was very clear this guy was a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I do love that kind of stuff. I love awkward family interactions when they're not mine. Even when they are mine, sometimes I like them. I don't give a fuck. You relish in it. Anyway, that was catching up. Hey, what it do, everyone? And now we're moving on to plugs. Tim, you got anything to plug? You gotta say plug your shit, bitch. Plug your shit, bitch. No, I'm hosting now. Tim, you got anything to plug? Uh, no. Epsler? No, don't say Epsler. Um, no, I don't. Wait, am I gonna plug an Epsler? Yeah. Well, I was recently, speaking of, I was recently on Tyler Mead and Sarah... Hartshorn. Hartshorn's podcast, What's Your Type? So if you want to check that out, I was recently on that podcast. I was, um... I don't really have any dates. Oh, yeah, I do. I'm in Springfield, Massachusetts, May 5th. Mm -hmm. May the 5th be with me up there. Or is it May 4th? Hold on. Oh, my God. We do this every fucking Oh, my God. I'm at White Lion Brewing. I wrote it in my thing this time. I'm at White Lion Brewing in Springfield, Massachusetts, May the 4th. May the 4th be with all of us and also with you. And, of course, Micah Fox. Remember when you got mad at me for doing something hacky about my neck, my back, my pussy, my crack, and you're doing May the 4th constantly? Yes, but... It's not irony. It's not meta. It's not... It's not self-aware. It's the same thing. Right. No, no, no. It's not irony. It's not meta. It's not self-aware. It annoys you Mm -hmm. to no end, and that's why I do it. No, it annoys me to an end. We're over. Okay, well, that's fine. (laughs) After the episode, we will be dumping each other. Uh, and of course, Micah Fox, I think you know this, but some of the listeners may not. We may have new listeners who have no idea who live here in New York City, and they may want to go see the live advice show April 14th at the gutter at 8 p.m. We have comedian David Drake. We had comedian Courtney B. She canceled. So, <laughs> but if you see any advertisement for it, I already sent it out with her name and credit. So, whoopsie. Forgot to write asterisk subject lineup to lineup subject to change. Lineup so. is always subject to we change. We actually should name our show lineup subject to change. I know we really should. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to reach out to some other Pretty well-known people, and hopefully we'll be able to get uh, another great guest. So um, I've got one in mind. I really hope she says yes. That'll be April 14th at 8 p.m. at the gutter. Yeah, so Did check that out. Did you confirm with the gutter? What? No. Did I what? Confirm with them? <sighs> no, but uh, I will. Um, but So check that out. That will be April 14th at the gutter. It'll be a great time. Um and check out the Tough Questions podcast uh, with me and Jeff Sheen. And also check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash great hang where you can get all kinds of extra content. We have different kinds of shows, tier lists, bracket fights. We do Miss Manners. We just finished with the year of 2001 for Miss Manners. That was a really good episode, too. Yeah, it was a very good episode. And if you want, that episode was actually incredibly good. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to check out any of our past live shows, they are all there at the Patreon at patreon.com slash great hang, where uh, you can get all your extra great hang content. Cool. And um, uh, early May, the first week of May, I'll be in L.A. I haven't booked my flights yet, but I'll be... Uh, Getting a bunch of shows, hopefully, doing a bunch of pods. So if you live in the L.A. area, come um, keep an eye on my Instagram for more. Oh, good. Okay. And that brings us to... Oh, what's your Instagram? Oh, at M-Y-K-A-F-O-X. That's all my social handles. And follow me at hot underscore comic 69. All right. And now we are moving on to a favorite segment of the show. A what? Spit that bit. Tim, you got any new bits to spit? I got a bit. I got a little bit of a bit. Okay, let's Let me fucking look hear. It Maybe I'll help you write it into a joke that's not just, I'm on, folks. New premises. Um, he has them filed away. Let's see. Oh, so I want to talk about this Uber I took. Have I talked about this on here? Where I got picked up by this guy. He had... So I get picked up by this guy. He has a uh, seven... He has 75 rides. 
He has a four total? 75 rides total. Which is low. Which is low. You so, could do that in a weekend. Right. And he has a 4.1 star rating. Woof. City. What was he fucking? Was he driving a city bus? Well, so I was like, oh, well, maybe it's maybe he just had a couple bad rides. And I thought uh, they got kicked off below 4.8. I think you need X amount of. I think you have to get to like 200 rides and then they kick you off or whatever. Damn. But he had a 4.1 star rating. And I was like, okay, maybe he just had a couple. Maybe he got lost once and it fucked up his whole star rating because someone gave him like one star or something. Whatever. You know? Okay. And I get picked up. His car is beat to shit. Yeah. I open the door. Smoke comes out because he's smoking a full-on cigar. Dear Lord. (laughs) He's smoking a full-on cigar when he picks me up. The oldest black, the oldest, like, skinniest black man. He looked like Black the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> it was crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> he was so old. And uh, How is this guy not getting five stars every time? <laughs> I don't know. Well, probably because he's smoking a cigar. And so he's smoking this car. Now, he takes me to the hotel. He's driving 100 miles an hour. Where is this? This was when I went to Little Rock to open for Tom. Oh, this is in Arkansas. Yeah, this was in Little Rock, oh, Arkansas. I, I guess like, I should have said that. This is in Little Rock. Okay, so that's a good thing to know about the bit. Say that you're in Little Rock, Arkansas. Go on. So I had taken the, well, and earlier, uh, so earlier I had to go take the bus from Memphis to Little Rock. And uh, my Uber driver, so I looked up where the bus stop was. My Uber driver takes me to the bus stop. It's in possibly one of the worst neighborhoods I've ever seen in my entire life. And yeah, and then the Uber driver tells all his friends, hey, there's a mark waiting at this bus stop for a bus that's never going to come. Well, my Uber driver, she said, uh, are you sure? Are you sure? You sure this is where you should be? And I was like, it's where it says I should be. And she goes, um, okay. I guess I'll drop you off here. That's she drops me off. Security guy. There's a security guy at 8.15 in the morning. I I go, hey, is this where the Greyhound bus is? He goes, no, that's down there. And my Uber's running, like, going away. I run and bang on. I go, I'll give you cash. Can you just get me down here? And she, she takes me down there. Now, this is like a black lady in her 50s. Yeah. And she gets out of the car with me at the next bus stop. Walks in there with me like she's my mom. Oh, my God. Uh, I told her I could figure it out, but she walks in like she's my mom, and loudly to everyone in the bus stop, she goes, uh, excuse me, this man needs to find his Greyhound. Oh, my God. Tim. uh, (laughs) Timothy. And 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 you wonder why fucking special ed schools wave to you as they walk by. And she goes, where you going, baby? And I go, Little Rock. And she goes, he going to Little Rock? And... You never told me this, <laughs> Timothy. And so the lady at the Greyhound, who had a line of like four people, she goes, it's over there. And I go, thank you very much. And I handed her like $30 or whatever. And I <laughs> went and got on the bus. And she was like, have a safe trip. And I was like, thank you. So so I go from, this is actually better, because I go from having one of the best Uber drivers yeah. to one of the worst Uber drivers. Yeah. Except this guy drove really fast, which I do like. I like when they drive really fast and get me where I want to go. Yeah, I mean, that's less time inhaling cigar smoke. It's true. I had to roll both of the windows down in the back because he had the windows all the way up. Except he did that old man thing where he just had one little crack on his window while he was smoking. So he's smoking his cigar, burns his pants. He, he dropped was off the his, road. He like, drops his no. He stayed on the road. He was fine. He just dropped his cigar on his pants, and he burned himself. And he goes, "Oh man, motherfucking burnt my motherfucking pants! I can't even believe I burnt my motherfucking pants." <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. I'm sitting there dying laughing. And he goes, "What are you laughing about?" I what was are you like, laughing about? <laughs> You're I'm a like, fucking bro. goddamn minstrel show, motherfucker. What I are you go, talking bro. about? I go, bro, you can't be smoking while you drive people around. He goes, ah, whatever. And then he lit up another cigar. Wait, you told him you can't do that? Yeah. And I, he... go, I go, I don't really care, but you can't be doing that. Ah, uh, hold on. I have a message from Tito Garza. Hey, uh, can you do all my work for me for the rest of time? I have children. Bye. Uh, that is exactly what he was asking me. 
Just one of Okay, you can either have kids or have a job, not both, and I fucking stand by that for the rest of time. <laughs> the amount the amount of extra work I've done in my life because somebody had to procreate is absurd. Yeah. Well, that's the story. Yeah. I think it's funny. I think there's parts where I can add like punches and embellish a little more, but I Well, think how does it end? What well, ends with me getting to the hotel safely? You need a what we call in the industry a punchline. Right. There's no I mean, it ends with that man dying of lung cancer, I assume, but There you go. I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you'd be like, I tried to get a ride with him again, but uh Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but that's that's like the new story I'm kinda working on. I mean, it's a funny story. It could be shortened quite a bit. That was 10,000 years long. I can't ask you for bits because you don't write jokes. You just have shit happen to you, and then you tell it in the longest fucking way possible. I mean, I wrote a joke, but you said it was bad. What joke? About my girlfriend being Asian, and I fuck her so much that she's cock Asian now. Tim. (laughs) She had to fill it out on her college forms can't because she's in high school the joke makes no fucking sense and it's bad even if it does make sense you're i'm gonna fucking have to support us for the rest of our lives i I can just while you fucking cry about nobody liking your cock asian jokes man they have not been liking my fucking uh banging banging fat and skinny chicks joke no we're not telling it they have not been liking it though Okay. Check out my socials if you want to see it. I didn't see that, but okay, now we're moving on. Next segment. All it's right. It's time for Hot Take. Hey! This is where I'll read a, uh, a, hot, a hot moment on the internet, and we'll give our quick takes based on the subject line. What? Don't look at me like that. I don't like You're, how you've explained it the whole time. I, I explain exactly what it is. I don't use weird words like, say, I'm reading a hot moment on the internet and yeah, we give our be, quick takes. Because how this started was there'd be something that people debate on the internet, and it wasn't always, am I the asshole? But le- recently it has been because that saves me a lot of the effort of just catching them as I go. But the way, what I say is Micah gives us a situation, we get a little bit of information, we give our take on it immediately, and then she gives us more information, which exactly is exactly what the segment is. Stewarty, I don't say to we you. get hot moments from Tim, the internet. Nobody, by the time you're done with that spiel, understands what we're about to do. I watch it happen every fucking week. They don't pay attention. No, it's because you are... All right. This is from Am I the Asshole? Would I be the asshole for asking a family to remove their child's death memorial from my property? Oh, that's interesting. That's tough. They must live on a highway. Um, here's a fun joke you can do. You know how they put little white crosses around for where people die on the mm-hmm. road? When there's a big white cross, you know, that like signifies a church, you can say that's where a bus <laughs> crashed and a bunch of people died. So they put up a big white cross. That's funny. Is that a joke you've told before? It's one I, that's a, that's a in life, uh, bit that I do on the road. Ah. I go, that's where there was a bus crash. I've gotten a lot of people to be like, really? Did they really do that? And I go, yeah. Um, it's tough, man. That's tough because their child is of course dead. Yep. But also, and they probably got hit by a drunk driver. We'll see. But also it's your yard and you're out there. You don't want to have to like weed whack around it. You want to <laughs> like, you want to like mow your lawn regular. You don't want to do a little extra work just cause some fucking kid died in your yard. You don't want to look at someone's death memorial. Yeah. And then they put like stuffed animals and stuff out there and they get all wet and rotted. And like two liter bottles full of piss, two liter bottles full of piss filled with, uh, they put, you know, they'll take these fucking stuffed animals. They'll piss in them. Then they'll come by, drink the piss later. Yeah. You ring it out. Um, this is really tough. How do you make an eight-year-old cry twice? Oh, uh, drink the piss that punch them while you're drinking, while you're fucking them in the ass. I don't know. You wipe the blood from your dick onto their teddy bear. <sighs> I was getting close. You were getting real close. I was getting close, and Micah, no more of those kind of jokes on the pod. Come on. 
fine. That's disgusting talk. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. We're watching the Nick thing. It's getting me all fucking. Oh, yeah. We got a comment being like, why don't you guys talk about something important like the Nick molestations? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why don't we talk yeah, about. Well, I something? guess we don't talk enough about child molestation on this show. We also don't talk enough about people like really stretching to find a reason why some of this stuff is upsetting. A lot of the people on there are like, and then could you believe that they that the, they said my pigment for my skin was charcoal? It's like, yes, you're black. Tim, that one was kind of more offensive. There were less <laughs> offensive ones. I don't know why you picked that one out. Because <laughs> it was actually offensive. You're fucking weird. I personally think putting a dickle through a glory uh, pickle through a glory hole is hilarious. And then making Ray Romano eat it. That's hysterical. Maybe Ray, not for children, but Ray it, Romano got to suck on your little pickle a little bit. I gotta man. admit, if Saturday Night Live did that kind of shit, I'd be watching. Um, I'm going to say no. All right. I recently purchased a home on a country road. Five years ago. I was close, close. I was close. Five years ago, some drunk local teenagers wrapped their car around a tree on the property and one died. All right. So that was, I was right on that. Their family created a roadside memorial with a four foot cross and wooden sign. People come a few times a year and place flowers, notes, etc. The memorial is on my property in front of the tree they hit, about 10 feet from the road. I don't want to see this memorial every day. It's depressing and reminds me that a tragedy happened here, which I don't need. I'm trying to get over some stuff. They do not say what. Probably from killing their kid by driving into a tree. Oh, I thought it was some kind of bloody teddy bear situation. Yeah. And about how the teddy bear couldn't get all the blood off their dick. But I'm also sensitive to the kids' family and friends' feelings. Would I be the asshole if I asked my family to take down the memorial? <sighs> That's so tough. The answer is yes. And what you should do is cut the tree down. The tree is the murderer in this situation. We should put that tree behind tree bars in a forest. That's what it, where trees belong. Oh, that is a good idea. It's better than my idea. What was your idea? To put it all in the street? No, just uh, next to the cross, like in front of the tree instead of a cross, paint one of those wily e. Coyote like drive throughs Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and then everyone can keep dying there and all of a sudden they get crowded out. Yeah, that's good. You know, it's like, oh, this isn't where your child died. It's where all these children died. Thank you. What about if you made another memorial, a satanic that's memorial exact, yeah. next to it? Being like, actually, the kid liked Satan and freedom of speech and whatnot. Yeah, or just decorate your house with, like, Satan lives here. Put one of those signs. Yeah. In this house, we believe that Satan is good, children should be wrapped around trees, and blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, there we go. Yeah. Okay. It's That's a tough one. That one's on the fence. I don't know. It's on the fence. Oh, no. Just like that boy's decapitated head. Y here's the thing. Don't fucking uh. come back to some stranger's house to talk about how he died. Just find a place where he lived and go celebrate him there or go to his fucking grave site. Yeah. Go to his grave site. You don't need to go to some strange... Multiple times a year you go there Yeah. and see tough. where he died. Listen, just you can drive by if you need to look at it, but don't be fucking leaving cards where he's his soul isn't living Four in the tree. Four feet is big. It's huge. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, can we let's make a little or cross, I'd say. You're like offered to plant a rose bush or something. Yeah. Well, my son was wrapped around a tree. But I planted a rose bush for his body. You had a friend die in a stupid way like that? Yes. Did you ever go to his death site? I drove past it a lot of times, but I never went to it. No. Yeah. You just drove past. And, and I'd go, I'd go, R.I.P., bitch. Yeah. I'd say. Huh. Okay. Well, cool. That was a good. That was a great. Uh, that one's tough. Uh, Sound off in the comments what you think if the person's an asshole or not. So just let us know in the comments. I really think Wiley e. Coyote their way onto a tree is a good idea. Yeah, that's good. But let us know if you think the person's an asshole. I don't think so, but it's tough. Yeah. I mean, would I? I would just leave that there forever, and I would never. I would never bring it up to them ever, even no matter how much Micah was like, we need to get this out of our yard. I would take it down anyway. You would, I would, without your, no way. I just would not be, I'd be like, Micah, this is your fucking battle. I am not involved at all. Are you kidding me? If we were finally homeowners, 
I, like once I own property, I'm fucking Israeling that shit. Get their fuck off. Oh my lord, my god. Get the fuck out of here. I don't want any evidence that you were ever here, my dude. Wow. All right. Um cool. That was a great uh hot take. That was great. And now we're on to our next segment that I definitely remember what it is. It's the best part of the show. Reviews for the podcast. Yes, it this is. This is where you can go on Apple iTunes and leave a review, a five-star review. We prefer five stars, but any number will do. Tim, do we have any Apple reviews this week? Let me look to see if we do. No, it looks like we do not. Um, but you can also leave a comment on uh, YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, now is a great time. <laughs> To fucking click that subscribe button. Make sure you're up to date on all your great hang clips and shows. Right? Catch the drama where it starts. Click the like, subscribe. What click else do you like, gotta subscribe. Do? You know, just keep us keep us in the algo, bitch. Hit the bell for notifications. Hit the bell for notifications. Play it all the way through, even if you have to on mute. You know what I mean? They'll, yeah. They penalize us if you stop halfway through. Keep the time of the show up. Well, Micah, go ahead. Do we have any comments? Have you? Did you pull it up? Don't pull it up on the computer. I have to do it for my phone? Yeah. Well, I thought, all right. See, this was, uh, were you not prepared to no, run the show, No, because we Micah? did. No, Oh, I did, what, did you pull up maps? Yes. Because I, all right. I have on. it pulled up on my phone. I could do it. So then fucking do it. Mm, I don't know, all though. Right. I'm not in charge of the show today. It's great, Hank. G-R-E-A-T. Uh-huh. <coughs> yes. H-A-N-G. Uh-huh. And then you're going to want, when you get there. You're going to pull up our newest episode. You're going to hit newest. Catfishing on, your dad. Mm-hmm. With mm-hmm. Keith Malley. A great episode. Hey, and everybody, if you can, go out and buy Keith's book. Micah, turn the sound I down. I did. How do I get to the comments? Go down. Scroll down. No. Oh, my God. Give me your phone. Hold on. There we go. Wait, found it. Found it. Found it. Found hit it. Hit newest because it'll pull up the ones that get hit. Where does sometimes. it say newest? It should say be right on top. It should say comment best up to, on top. No. Here. No, I'm doing it. <laughs> Did you find it? No. No, right. I didn't. Are you ready? You, uh, Micah, people are tuning okay. out because you fucking don't know how to run the show. All right. This is from Dre and Nicole. I've never seen Keith so calm and chill. Yeah, that's true. He was calm and chill. I think it's because we made him hustle over because I had forgot that we booked someone. Um, and this is at Sean from Pittsburgh. Shout out, Keith. Turns out my dad is a real piece of shit, too. Damn. Sean from Pittsburgh. Sorry about your dad, brother. Shout out to Keith. Check out his book if you want to feel like you got redemption on your dad. Um, this one's coming to us from Robert Foudriat, 8487. That's Foudriat. Robert F. We Robert just F. Call him Rob, Rob F. Oh, sorry. Um, Micah, I know you love the news. Hearing Tim learn to read aloud gives us all confidence in our own ability to speak publicly because we couldn't possibly be as bad as him. Well, Rob, thank you very much for writing in. That was nice of you. Uh, another 10 out of 10 episode, exclamation point. Always fun, always great hang. All right, let's go. You redeemed yourself at the end of the comment. Um, I love how uh, AJ Cook says, I love how Keith is a fan and midway through the show, he's watching the podcast, but IRL. I don't understand what that means. He's just watching the podcast oh, he's in real there. life. Yeah. 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 Because he, um, okay, cool. Um, Steve Ball says first. Yes. I love it. Bring first back. Bring first back. I look forward to every Wednesday and a new episode of Great Hang. This week's guests just made it even better. KHEG was the first real pod I started listening to to 13 years ago and was introduced and quickly became a fan of Micah. <gasps> and then subsequently, Tim. Yes, subsequence. Hopefully, Uncle Jemima can express in better words the elation that today's episode has brought me. Wow. My man fucking, uh, you think he touched his male G-spot while he was trying to watch the show? Either he or a toy did. Wow. That's exciting. Um, Al- You're shooting ropes. Lasso. That's a song about shooting ropes. Micah, tell us the story of that cool geometric abstract painting behind y'all. Did you paint it? No. But uh, Tim's sister-in-law, My sister-in-law, Laurie, Laurie painted it. Laurie Moore, uh, where is it here? Yeah. I got her card right here. LM Mo- Artwork, is that where? That's, what, that's more, her Instagram. Yeah, you can check her out at More Than Portraits. And it's uh, Lor- Laurie, L-A-U-R-I-E, Renee, R-E-N-E-E, Artwork at gmail.com. 
And you can follow her on Instagram at L R M underscore artwork or more than portraits.com. Yeah, she painted it just for us. She knew I liked a mid century modern aesthetic and um, looked to Mad Men to find something cool to paint for us. So I thought that was really cool. Yep. We, she, we also have a picture we should show it later of Toe that we she painted. We have a painting of the cat that she did a great job of. Which Laurie is, my is a great artist, so check her out at more than portraits.com. Fuck yeah, dude. All right, this one's from New Jersey Greg. Line of the Ep from Keith. Do you guys have sex? How do you get past this part? After all your bickering, what made the line great is how you both responded to it and how it showed the genuine love and affection you two share. Blech. Thank you. Thanks for reading into it like it was a book. Wait, and then it said, without that, this pod would just be another couple who are sick of each other. Wow. Shots fired, Rich and Bonnie. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, at 35, Fickrock says, I knew that lady was the asshole when she commu- she called communicating permission. Yes. Then I splooged. Oh, nice. Um, at just, there's a bunch of these, damn. Yeah, we got 21 comments. Holy fuck. Uh, it's a good thing I'm reading. Yeah, Dear it's Christ. a good thing we don't have a guest. I want to get to the point where we have so many comments, we have to do our an, a separate show of just comments. <laughs> no, we should do a best of, though. No, well, maybe for the show, but then we should have to do an extra show for everybody's comments. Um, every Wednesday morning is a treat because of Great Hang. Tim, where do you get your koozies? I'm stealing your ideas for my band, and it sounds like you found a good price. I was going to DM you, but I refuse to be ignored in your message requests. I don't really ignore anyone, but... Uh, you can, I get them at totally promotional.com. Um, I get a, you, the, I think I get them for like 70 cents, but if you get like a bunch, you can get it down to like 30 cents a koozie. Um, this one says at Micah is a Fox and I love the news segment. Let's go. No news this week. Wrong. That was at Flojo 83. Flojo, you are right on both accounts. Micah is a fox in the news rules. Um, John Cronin says, lost it at Swarm of Vs. Oh, yeah. Is that when you mispronounced bees? <laughs> yeah. That's when I couldn't read the word bees. Oh, right. Um, at user something something says St. Patty's intro was fire. Is that is that a is user something something? Is it gray with an A next to it no. or in the middle of it? No, it's like ID. Then it's let like, me look at it. Then it's like a password you get like from the. That's Alan Thick Dick. It is gray with an A in it. Oh, that's the picture you mean. Shout out Alan. How do you Thicke know it's Alan Thick Dick? Because I know stuff, Micah. Because I do this every week. Because I'm the one who runs the show. These are things you know when you run the show. I know these things. Thank, shout out Alan Thick Dick. What's up? At Christina, What's up, bro? At Christina Gonzalez says, love the show. Love you too, baby. Love you, Christina Gonzalez. At Avocado Colorado says, I have never seen Kate's legs. This is fucking weird. Ha <laughs> ha. That's funny. <laughs> should, we, should we fucking start an OnlyFans of Keith, different shots of Keith's legs? We should, should we follow Keith around and take pictures of his legs with our camera while he's walking? Yeah. But also great up. Keith is King Petty. That is true. He is. King, Pe- King of the Petty Boys. Tom Petty. And it goes Tom Petty and then Keith. Um, as far as King of the Petties. At Chris and Fremantle says, great episode, but for fuck's sake, Tim, ask Mike for some tissues for your birthday, comma, gross. Chris, I got them, brother. I heard your request. I was, they were, but they were too far away in the episode, but I heard you say, get some shit, and I did. What? I don't know what's happening with my phone, but it's not letting me scroll through anymore. Uh, are you out? No, I'm in. I mean, are you out of, um, are Ugh. you out of comments? No, there's more. But it's not letting me scroll up. All right, I got it. Let me try it. Uh, Flojo said, Micah is a fox. Just every Wednesday is a treat. Micah, I think you read all of them. No. no. Fi- Hold on, I got it now. Oh, wait, maybe I did read them all. This oh, but except you- for our... Well, it said there was more, but I can't see But this now. is why you go hit newest. I can't hit newest. We'll show you later. It should like this. be like that. I'm not in the YouTube app. I'm on Safari. Oh, my God. What are you, a million years old? <laughs> you I went did. to Safari instead of going to the YouTube app? Are you a fucking idiot, Micah? All That's right. Cool. Now, here's our headliner. Oh, movie. my God. Yo. First of all, pause for a second. You went to Safari? I was looking You should have really- taken that to the grave. That's insane. Tim, you're I'll showing, be taking it to your grave because I'm about to the, kill your ass. You are showing your whole fucking ass Ow. on this show. Ow. Micah, you need to be in here a little because they can't. Uh, it hurts. I'm in pain, We're Tim. almost done. All right. I'm just doing the fucking headliner. If I missed your thing, we'll get it next week. Um, uh, if, you, if she missed your comment, it's because the real host wasn't hosting the show. 
This is from uh, Uncle Jemima. The Timster was really on for this episode, and it caused me to make puddles of hot goo all over myself. <laughs> Damn. Ew. Uncle Jemima, get a fucking... Get some of these tissues. Tim, that's the first time he specifically came to you. I'm proud of you. Dude, you know what? I didn't think about that, and it is an honor. Damn, is this how women feel when guys stare at them on the train and jerk off? Oh, that's be- that reminds me. I saw a guy jerk off this week. Well, too bad. We'll have to get to it next week because you forgot about it. All right. Now we can talk about it. How was this hog, Micah? Tim, I'm not going to lie. It was big. Yeah. I feel like was he homeless? I couldn't say. I want to say, I want to say a person with a home wouldn't jerk off in public. Yeah. But I do think it was not out of necessity. It wasn't a homeless jerking. Here, let me paint the picture. All right, I'd love. Uh, take me there, as Jeff Sheen would say. I'm on Star Street, walking toward Cobra Club to do the show, and that is like a very high high traffic area. A lot of people a over lot there. Of people. A lot of lot of bitches wearing. Uh, uh, revealing clothing as well, which could lead a man to have to crank so he doesn't R word a lady. That's dear Lord. What you gotta crank? Get the devil out. Um. So, but he was uh. You know how like sometimes they're like basement areas. So there's like steps down. So he's like not at street level. He's at basement level. Uh-huh. But his head is about as high as my crotch, right? And he's recessed in the back, and he catches my eye because his hand and his dick are the only thing that the light bathes. Dear Lord. He's, and so I look over and he's slow stroking. It what? wasn't any of this fucking fast homeless, like, let me get this thing done. He's cranking. jerking slow outside the, in the cold. He was romancing that bone. It was cold as hell outside. It was so cold, which I thought was pretty impressive how big his dick was. I was like, is he showing off how big his dick can get? What race was this gentleman? I think we know. Mexican. No, Tim. Oh. This was a black man. Whoa, black guy jerking at least, at the, in the night. Honestly, at least his dick was. I couldn't see his face. Ah. Uh, so who knows? Maybe there was like some kind of. Did he of, try to grab you? No, but uh, I, uh, I I kept it moving. Oh, you threw him a wink and kept walking? Well, so I realized, because it, it was so slow. Usually you can tell when someone's jerking off because they're doing the. Uh, yeah, thing. and they're like hunched over. And they're crying a little. Yeah, but this man was taking his fucking time, and he was clearly there without any care in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was standing. Homeless people sit while they jerk or kind of hide away. He was facing toward. Wow. So this was definitely a sex crime. Oh, you got sex crime. Oh, for sure. And I was it was like such a throwback because I haven't seen a guy jerk off in public forever. You know, it was like a real blast from the past. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when a guy jerks off on you. Um, in slow-mo so then I'm fucking pissed so like I accidentally responded which I know probably made him gum I was like oh fuck right yeah 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 and then I'm fucking furious about it so I was like where are the fucking cops when you need them and I'm like oh there's a million cops now in the subway station yeah because fucking Eric Adams is like we gotta have people you know burning your money by sitting on phones all day looking yeah, for yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. so I went straight we to we have to put our fattest cops down in the subway take up the most space we gotta get candy crush levels up man they got some real fat old women down there too like these women I'm like you're too old to be a... They look like correction officers that they gave a cop uniform to you're not wrong Tim it's crazy so I'm like, I, who are you catching? I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna give these people something to fucking do. You want an actual crime? I got a criminal right here for you. So I went into the subway stations to be like, get out your biggest handcuffs. Oh, funny. But uh, there were none to be found. Uh, so you tried to Karen on this fucking guy? Yeah, well, you th- tried to be a Karen on this guy who was jerking off, Micah. That's rude. You know what? Don't be a Karen. It was one of the few times where I'm like, this is something a cop could actually do. <laughs> Yeah. Like, they're mostly useless, but, like, making a guy who's jerking off in public stop doing that. And he was be- he was so brazen about it. Oh, and that's what burned you up even more. That's what, is it like if you're homeless and you're jerking off, it's like, what else do you have left in life? Right. But he was, like, legit, like, getting off on the pub- publicity of it. Yes. I mean, it was on sp- page six the next day. I mean, his dick found the light. He was, like, a theater major. Pretty cool. Anyway. Well. That was reviews for the podcast. Shout out to you guy jerking your hog to Micah on the street. Um, Micah? Yeah. What's next? 
Uh, this is the the guest time to shine. Or no, is it Fall in Love with Micah? It was, but we don't have a guest. I like to do that one with a guest. Fall in Love with Micah? Well, also yeah. guest time to shine. Do you have Tim? Do you have any new uh, great hang tips or tricks or things that make you a bad hang? First of all, mm. Irish exiting your fucking friends. Well, that that I guess we can use that one today because Irish Irish goodbying at a big celebration, not just a regular bar hang. Birthday party is fine too. When you meet up with your friends beforehand, if you have to get dressed up, yeah, if you have to get dressed up, or if you make, if you have a whole text chain. About the oh, event. Oh, yeah. You guys had a full-on text thread. We had a full text thread, which we harassed Bobby with for the rest of the night. <laughs> and Tommy, I, I heard, stopped responding. Stopped responding, which actually does speak to Bobby's star power. That he's still getting this much attention, even after he clearly didn't want to be part but of the group. But Tommy, Tommy will throw that bitch on do not notify, and he will go to bed. He didn't respond to us till the morning, and I even suggested that he might be dead. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Bobby's like, why isn't Tommy getting the heat I am? And I was like, because Bobby Bo- could be dead. Tommy but, could be dead. But Bobby also responds. Yeah. Tommy will throw that thing on, do not do not disturb, and he'll just go to sleep and not respond. Bobby has to respond because there's a part of him that uh, feels like he has to make his case known to everyone. Well, yeah. Anyway. Uh, it's Bo- what makes him very funny. Bobby, what you should know is that Eric was really sad that you Irish exited and th- talked about it for the rest of the wedding. Wow. Bobby, shame on you. I didn't even go, and I didn't fuck up that bad. That's right. Ta- he, Tim is that least- true? No, but oh. we, we, <laughs> we told him we would say that. Oh, okay. Eric thought it was very funny. Um, okay. All right. So that's uh, party ticks. Now we don't fall yes, in love with Micah. And so that's the other thing. If the person does Irish exit, what you have to do is get in cahoots with whoever's party or event it is and make sure that they play along with the fact that they were very hurt with the person Irish exit. Ruined his wedding. Yes, you have to play those kind of games. All right. Micah, what do you got? Now we are on the final, penultimate segment of the show. Wow, you're doing pretty good, Micah. Speak ill of... Yeah, it's not hard to do. We do this every week. Sometimes it's hard to do when you look up uh, YouTube on Safari. Okay, but that was me not knowing I was going to have to do that this week. Considering I had no prep to run the show, it's kind of like you really have no added value. Oh, yeah, I got no... (laughs) I oh deserve that. <laughs> I had that one fucking coming, didn't oh, I? Go on. Do, do another sentence, Porky Pig. <laughs> uh, Tim sucks and is dumb as shit. <laughs> wow, that one came out like crystal. <laughs> All right. Clear as a bell, they might say. Speak ill of the dead. Uh, Tim, why don't you go ahead? I would like. I was going to speak ill of a one Mahatma Gandhi today, but now I've decided to change mine. Oh, yeah? I'm going to speak ill of that little bitch who couldn't stay alive in a car. That when was they were mine, at- Tim. You can't steal mine. All right. Well, then I'll talk shit about Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> we can both speak ill of that kid who, could die- who died. <laughs> well, I'd Fuck like you, to- kid. You fucking ruined this person's property value. They're a first-time home. Ho- ho- owner and you'll never even know what that's like micah didn't prepare anyone and then she figured one out as we were doing the episode no i knew i didn't have to look for one because once i found the pot take i knew i had found my speak of the dead person all right well i'd like to well so kid i hope you're fucking paralyzed but in hell getting butt fucked by the devil and there's nothing you can fucking do about it brother I hope you're getting butt fucked by the tree that ended it all and that you haunt your three friends that survived you. Yeah, I hope the devil dresses up like one of those trees like in Lord of the Rings that walks around and butt fucks you, splinters up your fucking asshole, you fucking piece of shit. I hope you get butt fucked by a four foot memorial cross. (laughs) Yeah. Do you even think about how bad it would make your drunk friend feel that he killed you while he was driving? Yeah, we don't know who it, who it could have been him. Yeah. My friend, though, was not drunk. I would like that to be known. He was just being dumb. Uh, I will talk shit about Mahatma Gandhi, of course, who was a sex predator to women and a piece of shit. He said he said that he felt guilt by sexuality and sexual things. So he would make young girls sleep with him naked and he would try to resist getting a boner while sleeping with them. So th- like as a t- he was testing himself. Yeah. 
And yeah, if he right. could do it, he was pu- he was purified. We don't know if he ever did it though. Nah. So I I'd like. I to bet think there's a lot of little Gandhis running around. I'd like to think. The How fact- do you think India's population got so big? Yeah, that's a good point. I'd like to think that he kept doing it makes me think that. Uh, here, can you hit that a little bit? The fact that he kept doing it makes me think that he uh, uh, didn't achieve that and raped a bunch of these little girls. Hundo P. One of except one of them was his grandniece. If you uh, look like Gandhi, uh, I would look into some Survivors Network. So shout out Gandhi. I hope you're. I hope the devil's wearing a little diaper and butt fucking you in hell, taking your own bald head, sticking it up your own ass. You fucking piece of shit. Yeah, fuck you. All right, All right. and that's our show, Tim. Signing off, it is I, the greatest host that has ever been for this show. You know what? Sound off in the comments who you want to see host from now on. Me or Micah? Put that in the comments. And do you want that, Micah? No. Why? Uh, Please say Tim. This is too much work. (laughs) Ha ha, you bish. No, I'm kidding. I just like like not having to think or do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. But on the other hand, I do like being in control of how much you dock, which and limiting that for the sake of the viewer. So, yeah, leave in the comments who you'd like to see hosting from now on. And whatever you say, we'll go. And maybe Tim, we can get Tim to cry some more. No. Maybe I'd you can also, cry. You lo- ooh, your stand-up career's not going well, and you got kicked off of hosting your own podcast. <laughs> also. And, and you know, maybe you're not good at that either, Tim. But I do think that I did talk quite a bit on this episode but this so. time i let you as a por- as opposed to you forcing it on me anyway signing off it is i the greatest host that has ever lived old hosty toastman and toasty hostman of course timothy grady mclaughlin the second your patreon host your free feed best host timothy hosty toastman mclaughlin the second and i hope you guys have uh oh wait i'll do that at the end God, Hosty Toast Man sounds like a Ren and Stimpy character. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Powdered Toast Man. And signing off, it is I, a person who is an even better host without any preparation at all, a woman who loves Safari, YouTube Safari. Fuck you, man. You're using Safari as well, which is insane. That's what's on my phone. Use Google Chrome. I'm not going to go into an app to not use an app. If I'm, You know what I mean? No, you don't. No one knows no. what that means. It is I, a woman who cannot turn her head to give Tim nasty looks as much as she would like because it hurts. Uh, Toby's mom, Tim's girlfriend for now, your host forever, Micah Fox. And, and I, I hope you guys have a fucking shit rest of the week. And I hope you guys have a great host of the day. Goodbye. Host.